Good afternoon. Is it good afternoon? Welcome to the Ben on Beer Show for a Friday, August 3, 2012. Uh, this is a netcast about beer, brewing, the business, and the people. I'm your host, Ben Rayberg, and with me is Donovan Adkisson with Anero Media. That is me. I am here I need once you again. To talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I need you to talk. I need you to talk now. <laughs> uh, today mm. we're gonna we have finally have a brewery of the month that uh, I didn't have to uh, name them without permission. They actually got to talk to uh, a nice brewery in Colorado, and um, we're gonna talk about hops and. Uh, We'll, we'll get to that. I'm probably going to screw a lot of stuff up. <laughs> Come on, now. It's the third show. You, third you're, show. You're, you're a seasoned veteran. Yeah, but now. I haven't talked about hops before. Well, at least it's not dandelions. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was wrong about dandelions, too. <laughs> so, Donovan. Yes. What is the last beer you had? I think... The last beer I had was the beer that we drank in episode two. Which was? <laughs> I can't remember. I'm, I'm terrible. That was Victory Brewing Company's That's Headwaters right. Pale Ale. That's right. Which was very nice. You know, I should have remembered that because it... Uh, because of the name of it, I kept going... We kept forgetting the name of it. Yeah. But. Well, I completely just forgot the beer, so there you go. <laughs> But yes, it was a very good beer. Mm. It was a very good beer. Well, the last one I had uh, before my pre-show indiscretion, <laughs> indiscretion was uh, uh, Terrapin Brewing's Hopzilla, and that's a double IPA, 110 IBU, um, in You're, celebration of IPA Day yesterday. The second annual, right? Second annual IPA Day. Yep. I knew nothing about that until you mentioned it yesterday. Well, that's that's why I'm here. To educate. And in and the inform. post that I made yesterday, I said, I haven't heard of IPA Day yet either. <laughs> <laughs> but in my defense, it's only the second annual. Yeah. So we're yeah. going we're gonna to push that next year, too. I don't know if it's August 2 or, or the first Thursday of August. I don't know. But we will certainly be talking about it next year. Yeah, I was going to say, by next year, we probably will have found out. Yeah. Yeah, unless they just go, eh, it's in June. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. The last Monday in May. <laughs> Whatever, right? <laughs> mm, wow, well, we are. We have a brewery of the month. Finally, got somebody yes. to to respond, and and it's one of I'd say it's one of the major craft breweries. They mm -hmm. they have done quite a bit. They've been around a long time. Not as long as some, obviously, but um, they are rooted and here to stay. Well, Rooted and here to stay. They are in Colorado to stay. But uh, the Brewery of the Month, if you are looking on the video, and you can probably see my computer screen here, we have Oscar, Brew, uh, Oscar Blues Brewing Company. And I we talked about them earlier, mm -hmm. and we had a little news short about them. Uh, the founder grew up in Alabama, and the news story was that they they never were distributed in Alabama right. because of uh, some law. And then the law got changed, and by the time the law got changed, they weren't they were maxed it was already out. In, they they were yeah they were sending out everything that they were producing. But then um, either they expanded or were able to shift logistics and uh, were finally distributed in the state where. The founder Dale Katechis grew up. So, anyway, that was the news story that I've already told you in the first. Was it the first show? I think it was the first show. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I was wondering how you actually said his last name. I had to ask. I had to make sure I didn't want to murder it. Yeah. But it's Dale Katechis. Katechis. Yep. That's about as bad as Ad Kissin. <laughs> <laughs> I used to put the stress on the first syllable of your name. <laughs> a lot of people call me Atkinson or Atkinson. Nope, I'm not part of the county. <laughs> Thank you very much. But uh, that's an interesting name. Well, Dale Katechis and um, his high school sweetheart, as I understand it, took a road trip out west at some point. And um, 
ended up in Colorado or, or saw Colorado or something. They discovered Colorado. And in 1997, Dale founded a restaurant there. He started a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And um, in 1999, he decided that he wanted to turn it into a brew pub. And he started brewing beer. And I don't know the details of all that. Right. But in uh, 2002, he they decided, this is going really well, and let's start packaging this and selling it. So 2002 uh, was the first year that they packaged anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I understand it, they haven't bottled anything. They've, they've put everything in cans. And they started in 2002 packaging Dale's Pale Ale by, by hand in cans, um, thus becoming the first craft brewery to um, make or to brew and can their own beer. And they, they did it with one of those actual hand... I, yeah, I'm not even sure what the thing looks like. Yeah. I, I know what my bottler, my right. capper looks like, but I don't know... I want one of those canners. I'd like to can my own. <laughs> yeah. But... I mean, it, I'm, I imagine it's cheaper than putting it in bottles if you had to buy the bottles, right? I I don't... If you had to buy the bottles every time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the cans obviously aren't renewable or yeah. re, reusable. Reusable. Um, so home brewers reuse their own use bottles because you can just yeah. clean it, sanitize it, and recap it when you when right. you bottle again. But um, and that was ten years ago this November, two thousand two November. Um, really neat story. The reasons uh, they have for canning is it's highly portable. Mm-hmm. The can is much lighter than a bottle, so yeah, uh, distributing over the road or even by plane or whatever. It's lighter. It's you, easier to carry. You can carry more. So you're going to save on shipping costs. You can save on shipping costs. Yeah. Um, they are, as far as being portable, they, um, I remember going to a a concert at uh, Fiddler on the Green in Denver, mm-hmm. and you couldn't have any glass container. Uh, at the pool at any hotel, you can't have any glass near the pool. Well, that makes so, sense. You don't want to break uh, on it. On the no. beach, you're yeah. not supposed to have glass on the beach and, and many other places, parks mm-hmm. and whatever. Of course, I don't think you're going to the park with your kids and, and taking a 12-pack. But... <laughs> <I'm, clears throat> even though I'm pretty sure there are some people uh, that have. <laughs> um, wouldn't put it past some folks. But um, um, And the can preserves the beer much better than a bottle. A mm-hmm. bottle allows light on, in. And that cap isn't completely um, sealed. It's not a hermetic seal, really. Yeah. I mean, it allows oxygen in. Some of the caps have a little insert in there that absorb oxygen, so mm-hmm. it reduces oxidation. But um, the can doesn't allow yeah. any light in or any oxygen. You can keep it in this can for yeah a very long time. But That right there is 100% sealed unless you puncture it somehow. Mm-hmm. Unless you dent it. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I learned in what sixth grade science, a dented can allows you know opens it so much, whatever. Uh, but it yeah. it keeps out. And after a hundred years, yeah, okay. Hundred years. Well, you're not going to want to drink that. You should have anyway. drank it a long time ago. <laughs> but don't keep it in here too long. This stuff is good. I I have to say. Um, well, that's so, good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to keeps it. Keeps out oxygen and light. Um, they've had lots of awards and mentions. They've won, uh, I know they're won, oh, now, see, it's not in my notes. I'm trying to come up with stuff now. I'm I'm just going to stick to the notes. <laughs> but Dale's Pale Ale, I think it was in 2002, or sometime shortly after that, that the New York Times uh, claimed Dale's Pale Ale the best pale ale in the country, which is really good for yeah. a little, you know, nobody's ever heard of Loveland, Colorado. Mm-mm. And Lyons is just outside of Loveland on the... I mean, most places in Colorado I've never heard of until I met you, so, I mean... <laughs> Wonderful state. If you have... If you don't know what to do for vacation, just go. What's a vacation? You'll find out one day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, honey. We're loading up. We're going to Colorado. Uh, they are now produ- They are now distributed in 27 states. Nice. Which is very good. I'm assuming since you were able to get a hold of that, Georgia is one of them. Georgia is one of them. 
I think has been for a while. Okay. Uh, and in 2011, they produced 59,000 barrels of beer. Yeah, I noticed you did the... Uh... If you want to do some math, <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured the question would arise, so I went ahead and did the, the math. Uh, a barrel of beer is approximately 32 and a half gallons. Mm-hmm. Some people say 32, some people say 33. I think some people say 35. Doesn't matter. Um, that is 1,917,500 bottles. I mean, gallons. Yeah, that's a lot of beer. I don't yep. think I can drink that much in and, a year. And to think that they're not really in the top of the list of producers of craft beer. Mm-hmm. We we make a lot of beer in this country, which is wonderful. Wow. We just have to get people to stop drinking Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Unless they want to sponsor us. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. nope, not not if accepting you. Sorry, if you are made by InBev or Miller Coors or Molson Coors or whatever that is. <laughs> Forget it. Just don't call. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yep, just don't call. And with that, we will uh, have our tasting of Dale's Pale Ale. Yay! Because I'm thirsty. <laughs> now this is a 65 IBU beer, which it's pretty bitter, mm-hmm. but it's just wonderful. And for all you runners out there, get home <laughs> and reward yourself. Or even if you're on a bicycle. I guess it would be easier to listen to a podcast on a bicycle. Eh, yeah, because you're not bouncing up and down. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're hitting the ground too hard, you, you need to change your form. Yeah, well, yeah. All right. Blow my knees out all the time. I'm waiting for you to spill that. You dang near did it. (laughs) This isn't on camera. No, it's right off the edge. That's what we call in the South, folks, a beer foul. (laughs) (laughs) Well, at least I'm not sloshing it to you. Yeah. Sliding it down the bar, spilling it everywhere. Yeah, that don't that. We've talked about that before. That always kills me, especially on these shows where you see them. They walk up to the bar and they're they're picking up like you know four, five, and six big mugs yeah. of them. Yeah. And it, and the stuff just pouring off of it. And I'm like, really? Yeah. Why would you have your new rescue dog go get you a beer? <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> Does he even know what he's doing? No. Probably not. Probably uh. not. Uh, for anybody on Untapped, U-N-T-A-P-P-D dot com, uh, you can find me. Not not a lot of users on uh, Untapped. I forgot to bring my phone in here. I mean, my, uh, yeah, it used to be a phone, but anyway. You can check in on the web. Can you? Yeah. Do mm. you have an account? I do. So, uh, you can find me, Ben on Beer. Uh, ben Rayberg at Untapped, or not at Untapped, but on Untapped, and uh, we'll be we'll be drinking buddies. We don't. I mean, there's not a lot of users on Untapped. I mean, there's a lot, but it's kind of hard to find. It's well, yeah. I had uh, it was something that you turned me on to. I've used it a couple of times. I've got a total of. Uh, I've been a member since June 29th. I've got a total of five, what do you call these, check-ins or, well, number of beers I have consumed, two unique. I got one badge. You got a badge? I got a badge. Oh, that's the wrong camera. I don't want to take a picture of me. Uh, I got the newbie badge. Well, good. Good for you. I'm waiting on the, I got the 25 beer badge. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm waiting on the next one, and it just says, drink lots of beers. <laughs> I don't know how many I get. <laughs> uh, yeah, I checked in. Let's see. My favorites I have on here are Guinness, Black Lager, and Arrogant Bastardale. So. I have uh, what, 100 and, 107 or 108 now. Wow. Well, that, and, and yeah, it's it not that I'm, many unique. It says I'm, I'm friends with this Ben on Beer guy. Hmm. It's your only friend? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm I'm in a poor state. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I see. 
107, you got 17 badges. 37 unique. Yeah. 37 unique, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, next show, it'll be at least 38. Because we have another Dale's, or not, <laughs> another uh, Oscar Blues. That's right. Brew next show that I haven't had before. And I, I'm i betting it's going to be wonderful. Yeah, well, the, the can looked interesting, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Deviant Dale's. Really, you took you took a picture. Why not? <laughs> uh, why not? Why not? Okay. I like to share. Sharing is good for the soul. Sharing is caring. Mm-hmm. Now, who said that first? Was that the Care Bears? I think so. Nice. Yeah. See, there's Share Bear and Care Bear. There's a Share Bear. Yeah. I believe this show, be. is, this show is getting derailed. <laughs> we're, we're now talking about Care Bears and Share Bears. You know, bears. that pre-show beer just does it in. <laughs> okay. Well, the pour is finished, and uh, I'm going to hand this off. Oh, good. Thank you. It's a pale ale, but it's not exactly pale. It's really golden. If I had a lighter, I'd light it so you could see yeah. behind it. I mean, it's uh, it's it's I mean, it's really hopped up, and and mm -hmm. I think that's part of what where we get some of the color, but obviously not that deep golden amber color. Great head retention, you know, like like all craft brews. Nice smell. Oh, it's wonderful. Yep. Bitter. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get that bitter beer face, are you? No. Where your bottom lip goes over your nose? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No. It's like I've said before, I'm not all that accustomed to drinking bitter beer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was raised on, on Americanized. I understand. Yeah. It takes some getting used to, but it you can't deny that you have to appreciate that. Oh, I much prefer... I much prefer these beers that we've been tasting over traditional Americanized Budweiser yeah, cores or whatever. it's too bad that that's become a tradition. Yeah. Well, I mean, this has got flavor, which is, yes. you know. <laughs> and actually, it's been out for, what, 30, close to 30 minutes. Yeah, and it's still. It's a little, it's getting warmed up, but it, it's still great to drink. You, you could not do this with uh, an industrial beer. It would taste like vomit. Mm -hmm. It seriously would. You, yeah. A lot of people pour their beer out when it gets too warm. And oh yeah. This is not. You could drink this at room temperature, and it would chew your palate up. But yeah, it, it's still good. Yeah, my my wife is one of those that, you know, if a if the beer hasn't just come out of the refrigerator, and I mean that that refrigerator needs to be like forty eight freaking degrees, mm -hmm. which I've never really understood, but then maybe. I do kind of, for her, beer has to taste like water. And I'm like, well, what's the point? Yeah, I mean, you might as well be drinking natural light then or drink water, one of the two. Well, vodka. Yeah, well, vodka. You're going to get more of a kick out of vodka than you are the water, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you like the taste of the mainstream industrial beers, mm -hmm. sure, you know. Yeah. You've become accustomed to it and, and. – Whatever, but I just want you to know that they're not using a whole lot of barley. They're using corn and rice to generate the sugars mm -hmm. because they're cheaper. Interesting you should say that. My wife actually saw on, um, I think it was Modern Marvels, one of those shows this morning, where they were actually showing how they used rice uh, predominantly in the light beers. Mm-hmm. Of, of like, you know, your Bud Lights yeah. and your Coors Light and stuff like that. <clears throat> and she also found out that uh, the majority of Americans mispronounce, we say sake, and it's actually sake. Sake? And it's sake. Okay. And, it, and sake is simply 
a rice-based alcoholic beverage. Yeah. And that we drink it wrong. We're not supposed to drink it in those little bitty things. You're not supposed to drink it warm and all of this other kind of stuff. That's just stuff that we've decided to do. I was doing it wrong then. You can pretty much drink it however you want. And um, you can drink it with any meal that you want to. Hmm. Based on based on the show that she saw this morning. I had never read about any tradition. I just know that it's made of rice. Mm-hmm. And boy, does it taste nasty. <laughs> I I say nasty. I shouldn't say that. It is different. I've never it's had it. It's not scotch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you and I currently d- differ on the yeah, taste of yeah, scotch. Yeah. So. Well, you had scotch. You had a nasty, cheap, blended scotch 20 years ago. I think I must have had... jaded ever since. Uh, yeah, I must have had the sake version of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you had the basement version. Yeah, it's like two fingers tequila. <laughs> uh, at, so, I heard the other day. Uh, not only are they using um, corn and rice to produce the sugars to get the alcohol mm-hmm. and keep it all light in color and pale in color, mm-hmm. it's colored like urine. And but they're using hop extract. They're not even using real hops. They're not. I mean, I can't verify this, mm, okay. but they are buying hop extract rather than using hops, whole hops, or pellets in the beer. They're just they're just mixing it up. Well, it's cheaper that way, probably. It is. It is, and it's just, it's just really disappointing. You're hmm. not going to get this wholesome glass mm. of you know full grain, whole grain. Nutrition. That's true. In you know your American lager anymore. And then anybody, if anybody saw the video that I made, it's kind of cheesy, but it's kind of funny. I'm not a videographer, but uh, the comparison of the nine American lagers, and I thought it was kind of neat. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to produce, but yeah. I don't guess I watched the video, but I saw the photo, the one where you took the shot, yep. where you had them all lined up. Yeah, yeah. Well, the video is where I just. You know, the, there's a little little clip. Every pop, every oh, okay. ca- uh, can popped open, and then every pour. <laughs> I actually missed the Budweiser pour. If you're counting pops to pours, mm-hmm. it's nine pops and eight pours. Anyways. It, they all look identical. They all look the same. Mm-hmm. If you put them right against each other, there's a, there's a few differences between the Coors and the Coors Light. But they all look like urine. They all look like urine. I don't want to just slam them i mean <laughs> but they t- they don't taste much different they have their own little you know bud light was recognizable but it wasn't a good flavor it was just mm-hmm. oh that's yeah i remember now yeah i've had it that takes me back to 1996 last time i had one um and then milwaukee old milwaukee had some kind of motorcycle mechanic chemical taste to it, it was, <laughs> that must have been the hop extract i have <clears throat> i have never been able to stomach old milwaukee oh i can drink it's a hot day beer it's cheap you can get a 12 pack for like six bucks uh, yeah and it's it's just lawn mowing day beer oh god well you know you and i've talked about ice house i much rather have ice house than old milwaukee it's just more expensive you know when you're going for hot day beer it's it's the cheapest 12 pack you can get and yeah. it's probably old milwaukee schaefer um uh what's the pbr perhaps blue ribbon and yes. you know because there's nothing wrong that's 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 how it's been in america for years decades but the uh, the craft beer revolution is here it started mm-hmm. in the 90s and nobody saw it um continued till today and we're making some head way <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make it so, well <laughs> in the beer. You're making yes, head more head. Yep. More okay. head is more better. Anyway. Everybody understands that what makes this so bitter is the hops. I hope they do. If you don't, listen up. You're gonna get a. <laughs> you're gonna get a disorganized explanation <laughs> of hops. You're about to get educated. The hops plant is humulus lupulus. In Latin, um, and I'm a hop head, and I figured I would just try to l- learn as much as I could about this wonderful plant. 
If you're watching the video, you can see it now on the screen. That is a um, hop cluster. I never really knew what it looked like. Yep. those. It's a cone, and it's shaped much like a pine cone. You know, it's got the same spiral to the to the leaves or, mm-hmm. the, or the petals. Mm-hmm. Oh, those are called bracts. And um, those petals contain lupulin glands. And the lupulin gland holds the resins and essential oils. That's what makes the bitterness. The resins are... Uh, primarily two different types of of acids. Mm -hmm. Alpha acids and beta acids. The alpha acids make the bitterness in the flavor. That's what's on your tongue right now that you can't brush off. It's on the back of my (laughs) tongue right now. And it's just (laughs) that's what holds on to you. That's alpha acids. It makes me want to go have a hamburger or something. (laughs) I need some fries with some chili sauce or something. (laughs) Uh, actually, the bitterness in the hops uh, exacerbates spiciness, so you don't yeah, really yeah, want that. You want, to counter, you want to counter spiciness with uh, something like a porter, something sweet. So why is it that people drink beer with hot wings? Well, wait a minute. That would be American. They drink beer. that American yeah. shit. They <laughs> a glass of water. <laughs> yeah. You're better off drinking milk. Yeah. So the alpha acids are what make your mouth curl up mm-hmm. <laughs> when you drink a double IPA. Okay. The beta acids lend the bitterness to the aroma. So they have uh, high alpha acid hops, or the, the alpha acids um, measured in the hops at 9% or so. I think the cascades are about 9%. And those are the, those would be used as a bittering hops. Mm-hmm. That's what you add at the beginning or early stages of the boil. And the low alpha acid hops, like 2, 3, 4% alpha acids, you would add those to the boil at, say, 15 minutes to go okay. to 5 minutes to go. That would, that would give you the aroma, mm-hmm. the, the, the thing that just hits you in the nose. Like uh, shift pale ale isn't a really bitter beer, right? but it hits you in the nose when you open it up. So mm-hmm. they've got the, the finishing hops, whatever they've used, is, is what's hitting you in the nose, and you don't really taste that when you drink it. So. Okay, so it's just it, that's mainly there just for the aroma. Yeah, it's for the aroma. It's okay. for, you know, uh, for you to smell after work and relaxing. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the, I'm not going to, na- you can't name all of the different um, varieties of hops, but I'll name a few here. Uh, Cascade, that is a very widely used hop, and it's related to the Hallertau, grown in Germany for centuries now. Mm-hmm. Um, Hallertau, I understand, is not so popular anymore. Or now, is know, that something they use in German beer? They or? use it in German beer, and we use it over here too. But Cascade is related to Hallertau. It was a uh, um, kind of derived from uh, Hallertau, and and, and <laughs> I, I'm not going to quote this story. It's not even in my notes, but Coors, uh, Coors Brewery was ready to buy all of the Cascade hops that where they were making back in the 60s, maybe? Okay. 60s or 70s. And then they found out that Cascade wasn't exactly imparting the same flavors as Hallertau, is what they were using primarily at the time. Mm. So it was just an interesting... Thing, but craft brewers use Cascade a lot for mm-hmm. bittering hops. Okay. Um, Simcoe, I've heard, is a, a difficult hop to use because it has to be used at a certain time or a certain... Um, Interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. And Willamette, I used to say Willamette, but yeah, I heard hop people say Willamette. Willamette. And uh, Hallertau is... Hallertau, is, I think, was... Um, it's named after the region in Germany where they were grown, and I think cultivation started in like 736 A.D. Nice. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and before they used hops, they used uh, other herbs and spices like dandelion yeah. and things like that, but they somehow discovered, I mean, this is 
millions of iterations, I'm sure, they discovered that beer brewed with hops is not as susceptible to spoilage as other uh, bittering agents. You know what that proves? What's that? That mankind has been trying to get his drink on from the very beginning. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's right. Cheers. <laughs> uh, the differences in these different hops, obviously the alpha acid content, mm-hmm. the bittering that they land, like Fuggles, uh, Fuggle hops are a low alpha acid content, and they would be added. Fuggle. I know. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fuggle is used. Fuggle in Cascade, and and I think one other, is used in a, a clone of Fat Tire, a you, recipe that I have. You know, when I saw that, I, I for a, I had a momentary relapse that I was watching or listening to Harry Potter, or something. <laughs> you know, Fuggle. Fuggle. Yeah. <laughs> and it, <laughs> no, that's not Muggle. It's Fuggle. And uh, Cascade is you know eight to ten percent alpha acid, so it's used as a bittering hops. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really sure what to use in. Tales Pale Ale, but whatever they've done is is great. It's not like they're going to give you the ingredients list, huh? <laughs> Probably not. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'd never be able to replicate it. They have yeah. whatever water source they have. That's right. And that's a big part of, of, of where they are. Yeah, that, that's true. It's, it, it is interesting that you have to be very particular. I mean, on what little I know... You know, your your varying water sources are just going to really yeah. change the the. You've taste got a of different it. mineral content and a a different pH that that's coming out of the ground wherever you are. Mm-hmm. Especially down here in South Georgia, we've got you know tons of calcium or whatever it is. It's just nasty. Well, that's like that's like the water supply over uh, where I used to live. I mean, you you literally, if you did not filter the water, you could fill up the sink. And it was orange Ugh. because it was it was red clay. Oh yeah, yeah. In the area, and uh, I remember we were at my family was on a road trip, and my mom got a glass of water from Dairy Queen or whatever, mm-hmm. some part of the country between here and New Mexico, and the it they just handed it to her, and it was a uh, like Kool Aid, uh, with clear ice in it somehow, and it was just really <laughs> strange the the. The water, and they just acted like it was nothing. It was nothing, it. yeah. I mean, then, well, you've got that, and then you've got city water, which is going to have so. I mean, it is sterilized out the ass. Don't get me started. Oh, I know. My wife goes all kind of ape, ape shit crazy over the floor, fluoride and everything that's in the water. That's a t- topic for another show. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I don't have any questions from Twitter, we'll just keep on going. Yeah, um, we did, we did mention that, right? If if uh, I know, I mentioned it on Twitter. Yeah. But anyways, so, so yeah, if anybody's watching the show right now while we're doing it live, <laughs> yeah, you know, even if I'm not live, yeah, ask a question. Ask we, we need we need more content for the show because, you know, I don't have enough to talk about. Yeah. Already, I tell you what, we're probably gonna do. I, I, not to slow the show up, but uh, probably gonna get us a. a uh, I don't think you already have one. A voicemail number. So we can have people call in if they want to. I've got several already. Oh, if you want to give one of yours, that's great. But I don't care if I, you know, give mine. Yeah. Of course, I'm not going to answer the phone. But yeah. Well, no, this is mine. Will ring my phone. Yeah. No. 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 One we'll, of yours. Yeah. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. That way they can call in if they've got some a story, interesting story, anything they want to say. You know. Yeah. I, I you know. I want to turn you guys on to this new, you know, craft brew over here and, you know, somewhere down in Florida or wherever it happens or, to be. Or Richlands, Georgia. Yeah. There, there's a new brewery going in there. Yeah. So anything like that. But that's not the brewery of the month. <laughs> no, 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 no. Next, uh, next show, we're going to be talking about more about Oscar Blues Brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, I like their logo. It is neat. Yeah. It's real simple, but uh, kind of artsy, too. Red and... Red and blue. Red and blue. Yeah, I like it. Red, white, and blue. Yeah, red, white, and blue. But it's Americana. <laughs> there you go. Um, a couple of things about hops again. I'm not off the topic. I know. We, uh, you can grow your own at home. If you weren't aware. Okay, so if I grow it at home, then it's going to look like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unless the bugs get to it. And that's not going to be mistaken for any kind of illegal drug? No. Okay. 
I want to say, I, in what I've read, I think it's related to the cannabis plant in some way. But yeah, that would be interesting. Then again, with all the lines of evolution and everything. Yeah, is. yeah. Uh, but you can buy uh, what's called rhizomes. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure if everybody knows what a rhizome is. It's basically an underground root system. Um, Bermuda grass has a rhizome. It just a root that grows underground, mm-hmm. and then the plant sprouts off mm-hmm. of the root mm-hmm. wherever the okay, uh, rhizome yeah, goes. Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. So you can buy a piece of that rhizome <clears throat> from a specific um, variety of hop mm-hmm. and plant it. Um, you got you know, it's a really invasive plant. <laughs> they say uh, it grows twelve to eighteen inches a day. But in some cases, twelve to eighteen inches per day. Yes, we're not talking it's week. A, you can almost watch the thing grow. Wow! So careful. Uh, you want to grow it. Well, if you'll see it in the background in that that um, that whole hop picture, in the background there, those are. Um, I forget what the term is, but it's basically a string that's uh, taken from a wire about 20 feet up Mm -hmm. down to the ground and pasted in the ground. And they've wrapped, trained the hop plant around that string, and it grows 20 to 25 feet up. Okay. That's what that is. That's a, it's like, it looks like a corn stalk in the background there, but that's actually a, a hop vine climbing a string. Yeah, that stuff grows like kudzu. Yeah, but th- it actually dies all the way down <clears throat> in the winter and then grows all the way back up. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just kind of go to sleep in the winter. It dies okay, and then replaces itself every season. They say you can get 20 seasons out of a plant. Wow. Which is pretty neat. So what time do you harvest it? They harvest it late summer. Uh, they plant them early, you know, um, at the end of the frost. Mm-hmm. And... It's typically grown further north, um, northern California, Oregon, Washington, okay. those areas. So you um, don't grow it in Georgia? I can. I'm going to. You're going to? I'm going to. It's not going to be the same exact content, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put up a lattice and let's yeah. just have it crawl all over the lattice. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So that will be March. Uh, you can buy rhizomes from freshhops.com or... Northern Brewer. That's the only two places that I know you can buy rhizomes. And Burpee, that seed company that puts out all the... Mm-hmm. You, I think you can buy rhizomes there, too. But if you want variety, you can go to Fresh Hops. Yeah, uh, chat room just threw something out. You know, we might want to live stream the hop growth. <laughs> Set you up a webcam <laughs> so you can see it grow. <laughs> I could do it daily. <laughs> I could. I could set... A uh, place for a tripod to put at the same place every day and yeah. do a, a time lapse yeah. video. That'd Th- be neat. That would be neat. Um, and hops are always u- also used as um, for medicinal purposes, not very widely, but they have a calming effect on the person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there were stories of the hop uh, harvesters, the field workers, before we had mechanized harvesting mm-hmm. I think I have to burp <laughs> uh, they would get tired very quickly from you know after they and I guess is the, it just because they come in contact with it or yeah they get the oils on their hands yeah. and, and it just gets into the bloodstream and <laughs> <laughs> which at, at that point it doesn't surprise you that it's related to the cannabis yeah plant. that's true <laughs> That's true. I'm surprised they didn't. <laughs> people haven't tried to smoke that stuff. <laughs> I had, I had wondered if anybody had. I was almost said I considered it, but I didn't consider it. I wondered if somebody had and and what the effects might be. But right. it's probably just cancer again. <laughs> and but if you make a pillow of hop um, bracts, if you break it all apart and put it, and make a a bag, a pillow of it, mm-hmm. that's how you get the best sleep. The best sleep, just sleeping next to hops. You actually use it as a pillow? Or maybe put it under your pillow. I'm not sure. <clears throat> That's weird. Typically, uh, a double IPA does the same for me. <laughs> 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 I get so sleepy. I think it's the hops. <laughs> uh, well, you know, that or three, uh, 
three glasses of uh, some kind of vodka mixture does the same thing to me, too. <laughs> There's no hops in that. That's impossible. <laughs> no hops, but I tell you what, I'm 10 feet tall and bulletproof. I tell you that. <laughs> uh, uh, one more little trivia fact. Hops are toxic to dogs. Good thing I don't have any dogs around here. All I have are cats. But you don't have any hops. No, but I could be growing now, some. You know, these guys would feed beer to their dogs and whatnot, but the hop plant itself, I think, is toxic to dogs. Hmm. It causes a, them to overheat. It, they, they cause... Um, so they can't the cool hyperth- down. Hyperthermia, and they, you know, they, go, they have seizures and all that. So. Wow. Uh, I wonder what it is about their physiology that's so different than ours. I know, they can't have chocolate. Yeah. And they can't eat hops. Now... Nobody said what would happen if I just ate a hop cluster, but <laughs> uh, dogs have a problem, so just beware of that wow. if you're growing hops in the yard. Okay, wait a minute. Dog can't can't have hops. He can't have chocolate, but yet he's man's best friend. Man's best friend. He can share your beer. And he can share your well, beer. Well, maybe. I, I fed, I have given my dog the, the mainstream industrial beer. Yeah, of course. There's well, I know my dad has given. To that. I know my dad has given a little dog that we used to have, you know, a little saucer of beer before, and she was yeah. so funny. She was a Lhasa Opso, if you know yeah. what one of those, you know, would lap that up, and then she's walking around and she's doing this number. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? Yeah, I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think it's the plant itself. I don't think that there's anything. I mean, I wouldn't imagine that there's anything toxic in in the craft beer yeah. for your dog. So share, share, yeah. share, share, share. Um, that's that's about it. That's my that's my thing on hops. There's a whole lot more to it. Um, like if you grow in your own and you're going to use them in your beer, it's hard to get the measurement right for your recipe. Um. If you use pelletized hops, do we show that picture? No, 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 no. Let's. Uh, pelletized mm. hops are just machined, crushed, and uh, and pressed into this pellet form you see on the screen. Uh, it kind of looks like. I'm not gonna tell you what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> uh, I forget what they liken to do. I can't remember now. Looks like cereal, but it's green and cylindrical. Shape. I've actually I've actually seen something not <clears throat> not in the fecal arena, oh, but come on. but I've actually seen something that looks like this that was some type of oh like kitty litter. It, it kind of reminds me a little yeah. bit of that, you know, different type that you could get, which I've, I've would be a travesty that. if you used your hops for kitty litter. I've seen a pelletized material that you spread about the lawn, and it helps hold moisture. I've seen, yeah. But I don't know what, what that's called, so I can't really tell the audience what that yeah. looks like. Anyway, that's pelletized hops is is uh, pretty much the way the home most home brewers go. Mm-hmm. You can order whole leaf hops uh, from freshhops.com. You can grow your own, and you can uh, harvest them and dry them out. There are different methods of drying. You mainly want to have it in a dark, hot, dry place. <laughs> it's just nowhere in Georgia. <laughs> you can have it dark and hot, <laughs> but not you dry. You can't have it dry. <clears throat> Somebody posted something on a uh, homebrewtalk.com and said that they were going to do it in the attic, and I was thinking that is ingenious. It's 130 degrees in my attic. Yeah. Well... And it's dark. Tyler and I just put in a gable fan uh, about three weeks ago, three to four weeks ago, and I can attest to you how hot it is up there. I've been in my attic many times in the summer. It's terrible. Uh, we were having to take five, every five-minute breaks to I, come down. I stick my head up there and turn turn my head, look this way and that, and I'm already dripping sweat. I'm not even in the attic. Yeah. It, oh. It's terrible. But drying hops would be up. It'd be great up there. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Um, but that's about it as far as that was my spiel on hops. Um, I feel educated now. Oh, well, have at it. Yeah. High alpha acid hops in this beer. Yes. And I've learned that it's toxic to dogs. Toxic to dogs. You can grow your own. Plant them in March. Harvest them in August or so. And they somewhat give you the same effects as cannabis. (laughs) 
don't say that. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it banned. Uh, mm mm Couldn't help it. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. Um, pick up a book. I just I just searched Amazon for brewing science. Yeah. In books. There's a ton of them. Ton of brewing science books in there. Hmm. I want to get one, and so I can. I I don't need a college degree in brewing science, but <laughs> I would like to know more about right. emulsifiers and you know, big words. Yeah, big words. <clears throat> making uh, ionized blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, those. We will learn together. You learn, I drink. Mm-hmm. There you go. I did, however, plant pumpkin today pumpkin pumpkin now i had these high hopes about making my first homebrew of the of the year oh yeah in early september Mm -hmm. so that i would have pumpkin ale ready at halloween Mm -hmm. not gonna happen i don't believe i can get pumpkins early september even from the grocery store uh, and if I'm going to grow them at home, it's going to be at least 110 days. So you don't have the time. I don't. I'm not going to have pumpkins ready in time. Yeah. I could use canned pumpkin, but I'm not. I, a lot of recipes really shy away from using canned pumpkin because it's ground up and it gets really messy. So we're right, we're not really sure how quickly you can get a pumpkin from say like a grocery store. I asked my local grocer and they told me about two weeks before halloween (laughs) that does no good because you gotta let it i'd be bottling on halloween Uh, yeah so i mean i'm gonna check the other grocers to be sure but i'm in the meantime i'm gonna grow my own pumpkins and you know 110 days 110 to 140 days depending on you know Hmm. how long it takes and your soil and all that. But I'm going to feed them. I'm going to try to spray for bugs and, and get some really nice pumpkins. And I'm going to make some pumpkin ale. Okay, so I guess what you're really going to wind up having to do, <clears throat> well, I mean, you can drink it at any time, of course. Yeah. But if you want it for that Halloween season, you need to go ahead and do your pumpkins this year, go ahead and make the beer, and then just store it for next year. If it had a high enough alcohol content, I could age it. Yeah. And... It would probably be fine, but yeah. if I'm only getting my recipe, the the whole I put it in a uh, uh, piece of software called Brew Target. Mm-hmm. It says I'm only going to get about 5.6 percent alcohol by volume, which mm. is not really ageable. I need to be drinking it okay. in you know so many months. But you have pumpkin pie on on Thanksgiving too, so let's you know I'm going to go for a pumpkin ale around. End of November. Okay, the the chat room just threw in one of our avid followers. Red Brick Farm, pumpkins on the vines and strawberries in the summer. Both pick your own and already harvested corn maize, pumpkin patch in the field. Birthday parties, school tours. It's over in Douglas, Georgia. This is Red Brick? Red Brick Farm, yeah. Huh. There's a Red Brick Brewer in uh, Atlanta. That's I can go idea. get pumpkins? Well, they got a telephone number. We'll give them a call. Let's ring them up. Open for hours and availability, directions, call for, da, of course, da, 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 da. I think my local grocer in my tiny little town says, um, that thinks that pumpkins are just for jack-o'-lanterns. Yeah. And I don't think I want jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. Um, they don't have a really sweet flavor to them. I don't know the diff. Uh, there is a difference. I, I really have to figure that out, but... Um, the the plan was to make pumpkin ale for around the Halloween season, mm-hmm. and of course we're going to get like fifty two bottles of pumpkin ale anyway, so we'll have plenty to go to Christmas. Mm-hmm. In the event that I can't get pumpkin early September, I do want to do a brew day early September, and everybody's invited to my place for brew day whenever that's announced. <laughs> uh. We'll throw up an event on Google Plus as well as. Let's do an event on Google Plus. Can you can do events on Facebook too? But hey, I don't hey, give a shit about hey, Facebook. Who gives a shit about Facebook? Okay, so Google Plus. I only want smart people. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Only smart people. <laughs> 
I, I hate doing that, but I, I just, I have such a depreciation of Facebook anymore. I know. I d- look, as we've discussed on our other show, the only thing I use Facebook for is marketing most of the time. So, yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's a place with over 900, almost a billion people supposedly signed up to it so a billion accounts <laughs> yeah it's a billion well if you if you listen to uh uh no agenda and uh, adam curry mm-hmm. i think if i recall correctly he said out of the almost billion well it wasn't a billion at that time it was like 900 million yeah. he, he figures only about 150 million of them are actual real people the rest of them are just dead accounts sure uh, i get no value i placed a paid ad on facebook trying to get uh, Valdosta State students mm-hmm. for computer repair and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I mean, I, it quit. My impressions went to zero after a while. Mm. Yeah, I just gave it up. Yeah, it's not worth it. But now Google Plus is definitely there's a there's a higher quality of people there. I would say so. I I hope it stays higher quality. Yeah. Um. I hope that it. Why am I talking about this on a beer show? I don't know, but you got Will Wheaton there, who is a brewer. He, he is a... He's uh, an avid home brewer. Right, so he's there. And he nearly peed his pants talking to... Talking to... <laughs> to Greg... To Gre- <laughs> I, you know, I like Will. Love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he got really excited. I, I can't say what I would have done. Yeah, that's true. Uh, talking to Sam and Greg. Uh, it's two of my heroes. Yeah. Well, anytime you talk, you get a chance to talk to your idols or yeah, you know, well, yeah. your heroes or whatever yeah. people, people who you appreciate, not people you worship. I don't worship <laughs> anybody. So. But, uh, I, I, I get again. I want to. I want to plug um, Dale's Pale Ale. You can find that in at least twenty-seven states. If you live near a state line, you have a high chance of finding it. Um. And Oscar Blues Brewing. Mm-hmm. If you live in Colorado, it's not far off of I-25. Just go to Love Linden, head west. You'll find yourself in uh, at least close to Lyons, and you'll find the, the restaurant, the farm, um, the brewery, all the good stuff. To me, that, I mean, you, I know you've had the... Uh, <clears throat> You've had the pleasure of being able to actually eat in a, a brew pub. A couple times. And see, that's something I would really enjoy. Uh, I, I really want to go to one. There, Not only the, is the beer fresh, it's good, but the the food and the creativity mm-hmm. there is just mm-hmm. unsurpassed. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go there just to drink. I want to go there to eat and, and enjoy it's the It's wonderful the food. Mm-hmm. You can't beat it because they actually care about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it, it, at the... Oscar Blues, I can't remember the name of the restaurant. I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> Glad they're not paying me for this. Uh, at uh, that restaurant, they are uh, Oscar Blues Liquids and Solids, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> there you go. That's an interesting <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, they have, and I was going to talk about this on the next show, but they have the uh, Farm to Plate program, and they have they raise their own cattle. And the, it's processed oh. there. It's all um, grass-fed, and of course, you know, grains from the brewery mm-hmm. are are they. Um, the word does not simulate. They something. Okay, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not on the same wavelength. Wow, but. I can't think of that word. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the Dale's they, Pale Ale. <laughs> <laughs> they subsidize. Is that the word? That's the word. Subsidize. They subsidize the cow's diet with grains from the brewery. Oh, spent okay. Grains. Okay. They don't use them all, of course, but uh, they they recycle as much as they can, uh, and that that produces apparently an awesome steak. I imagine. Um, but the food at a brew pub, you know, they they care about everything that they're giving the customer. Yeah. Um. I have yet to find a fake one yet. I said yet. Yet. Twice so, in a sentence. So the closest one, not not of theirs, because we can't go to, you know, we're not going to Colorado right now, but I said now. 
We could uh, go on a funded weekend getaway. Well, yeah. If they want to bring us on up there, we'll bring cameras and whatever else. Yeah. Recording equipment. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Do some interviews and some eating and drinking. Maybe we get a thousand people watching the show. Yeah. Live? Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, Perhaps. But again, again, if you can find Dale's Pale Ale and you are a a fan of craft beer. Even if you're not, you need to try craft beer. And of the higher quality that I've had, Dale's Pale Ale and all of the brews from Oscar Brews. Os- <laughs> you you do it every time. Oscar Blues Brewing uh, is just wonderful. That's all right. I always stumble over the word brew, brewery, brewer, brewery, brewer, brewery, 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 brewery. Yeah, brewery. Yeah. Oscar Blues. Oscar Blues. In a can. Always in a can. And at times on tap at uh, growler stores in Atlanta. I've always disliked, I won't say disliked, but I've always preferred beer in a bottle. For Just drinking from the bottle? Yeah. I've always Not preferred. From a glass? <clears throat> well, let's put it this way. Most of the time, of course, you're changing my mind on this, but most of the time I would just pop the top and drink the beer out of the bottle. I mm-hmm. wouldn't worry about pouring it into a, a glass. Now, yeah, we do that, have... That requires washing afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Now, we do have those mugs that we showed you, mm-hmm. but uh, I would do that occasionally. But um, if I had if I had a choice between bottles, bottled beer and canned beer, then it would always be... In a bottle? It would always be in a bottle. And, and that's because I could always pick up the, the, the metal taste out of the can. Now, did you taste any metal in that? No, well, no. It's in my... It was in a glass. Okay, okay. I know, so I know. You're, pour it you're up. You're putting lips to the can, which is maybe why, you know, the, the different poles in your tongue are... You're electrocuting yourself, <laughs> drinking from the can. You reckon? So pour it in the glass. Okay. Have it proper. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I do like this. This is very good. Very good brew. Dale's Pale Ale, definitely. I'm going to have to start stocking up on some of this stuff. It's just not cheap. No. It no, is not cheap. I, honestly, I, I, I think I saw a uh, post, a question where uh, somebody was asking why Oscar Blue's beer was so expensive, but... Maybe they have three people canning one at a time now. I don't, I don't know. I say if you like the taste, if you want to try it, mm-hmm. I've paid $18 before for a six-pack of beer. I, I'm it, It's craft beer. You know what? It I, is. I need, I need the uh, <laughs> sound on my soundboard for that. I like to try different beers mm-hmm. it, it, and this could be i mean this 12 i had to get a 12 pack they didn't have a six pack available jesus did it have gold press latinum <laughs> in the beer <laughs> wow 18 this bucks. 12 pack was uh like 1750 jeez now i'm not sitting here pull you know putting back six of them yeah in an hour yeah one is awesome enough I'm not going to have to pile them up. Well, I guess that I guess that's really the difference. This type of of beer, you drink one, maybe two. Yeah. You go buy a six pack of Budweiser, you drink the whole damn thing in one yep. sitting. You you are just about uh, spending more money on Budweiser. Look, you could have one or two of these a mm-hmm. night, and have a twelve pack last you six days, right? Mm-hmm. Or you could buy a 12-pack every night of Bud Light, <laughs> which would ultimately cost you way more. That's true. This, I mean, it's a higher alcohol content mm-hmm. most of the time with craft beer, and it's better. Mm-hmm. It's wholesome. <laughs> it's so nutritious, <laughs> oh, part God. of this complete breakfast. <laughs> but... Okay, boys and girls, get your, get your Oscar blues because your Dale's Pale Ale because it's wholesome and nutritious. Yes, <laughs> it's good for you. But seriously, you don't... One, I've seen people just chug an entire Bud Light. Oh, which yeah. Which is just 
kind of senseless to me. Well, you know, you're supposed to take the can and you're supposed to pop it in the bottom mm-hmm. of it so you you get that oxygen flow and turn that thing up and bullet. That's yep. it. Yep. And then once you've done about six of those, you can't walk. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say, on the bottom of every can of Oscar Blue's uh, beer, there's a funny message. They just come up with the most creative stuff. This one says, let's get brevarded. <laughs> Where, and that has significance because their new brewing facility and restaurant is in Brevard, North Carolina. Oh. So they are getting Brevarded. Brevarded, okay. Another message on some other can said, crush on forehead. (laughs) (laughs) It was really neat. Please don't. (laughs) I don't know, I I don't know how that's printed, but that'd be neat to have a whole run of cans to say some crazy message. Oh yeah, definitely. But that goes to speak for the creativity behind the beer and the brand and the willingness to put it all out there oh yeah and not care you don't have to meet a status quo you just this is what you love to do i think what you love to have i think what they're doing is awesome i really do i would i would say so myself yeah definitely i would love to have dale call into the show yeah Well, there's two more shows this month. That's right. The first brewery of the month for Ben on Beer is a three-show month. Yep. So they they get one and a half times the exposure. Exactly. Eat it up. Yeah. Go for it. I have to find out where they're not distributed. And maybe we can target those states. Yeah. Anyways. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. I mean, we don't have any questions from Twitter, do we? No. We see no love from the tweets. Nothing. I haven't been tweeting the whole time. I can't talk and tweet at the same time. I'm not well, coordinated. I, I, I've been watching it. I haven't been tweeting, but I've been watching it. I guess I need to start tweeting while you're talking. Perhaps. But that's okay. Hey, it's only the third show. We got two more this month. We do this every other Friday. Every other Friday. 3.30 now. We've changed up the time. So. The next show, I believe, is August 17. <clears throat> I do not have a calendar. Well, today's the third, three plus four. Well, wait a minute. You can. I've got all the shows mapped out if you go to anero.tv slash calendar. I believe I have that one on the, on the uh, schedule. That is if my internet connection will allow me to get to the calendar. My battery is just an hour. <laughs> It's gone. Yep, next one is 3.30 p.m. on the 17th, and then we have one on the 31st, which is yep. the last day You're of... squeeze that last show into August. That's right. That is that is right. And, uh, oh, something that we would like to... Uh, <clears throat> if you go to anero.tv, on the right-hand side, there is a uh, little graphic, and you can actually buy Ben on Beer Tie. A tie? It's got the, yeah. It's got the Ben on Beer logo. It's a white satin type, silk type tie. They're about thirty bucks, but can you get a a, a beer colored one? So if you spill, yeah, I don't know about that. We'll have to <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But yep, beer on beer tie. Did you just say beer on beer? Ben on beer. <laughs> beer on beer. Beer beer on beer. Yeah, Ben on beer. Sometimes that's hard to flow. It is. It's been on, been on beer. Been on beer. Yeah, been on beer. Should we change the show? Nah. No. No. No, no, no. no. I've been going at this too long. Yeah. Nah, we'll... We're good. You know, just because I can't speak, that's okay. <laughs> I can't either, and I am <laughs> supposed to be running this show. <laughs> that's all right. When, I think it was the first episode I put up on YouTube. I actually titled it uh, Beer on Beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's somebody called me and said, uh, "Don't you mean Ben on beer?" And I'm like, "You're absolutely correct." You know, I, I wasn't in my right mind. So, hey, it's a new media company. There you go. Yeah. Well, if you don't want to ride your bike to work, uh, don't drink and drive. I'm trying to pass that message on uh, with every show, and. Uh, Try to get you to use the Wheaton Rule of Law. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, with that, we've had a good show. We talked about Oscar Blues and hops. 
Oscar Blues uses a lot of them. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Well, you guys have a good two weeks, and we will see you next next Friday, August 17, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting out of here. All right. Bye now. Bye. Keep up with the show at BenOnBeer.com and subscribe to the podcast with iTunes, www.BenOnBeer.com slash iTunes. Find everything you need to stay in touch at BenOnBeer.com and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at BenOnBeer. This has been a presentation of the Anero Media Network. Your reality distorted.